This video is just a quick overview and maybe a bit of a review of a couple of sort of novelty items I bought off of Amazon recently. Uh, one of them is a USB personal fan that's also a clock, and the other is a USB uh, programmable message display, um, which is also a fan. They are identical in appearance, and I'm pretty sure they're made by the same company, but in my instance they were sold by different sellers in China, but via Amazon, so I got them with Amazon Prime. And here are the listings for the two products, so if you're interested in the same thing, you can at least put them in the same way and hopefully find the same product. This video is about a couple of little toys that I bought recently, sort of on a whim. And I thought they were worthy of uh, some mention, so I decided to put them on my YouTube channel. One of them is this product. I bought it from Amazon. It's uh, the USB programmable fan, parenthetically microwave. And it has this part number UF-211-06RGB. And um, it is... a USB powered metal gooseneck equipped personal fan with embedded LEDs in one of the fan blades and um, it comes with a micro um, CD-ROM with the software on it it's supposed to be both Windows and Mac I believe at least I read that somewhere online but um, the only thing I found on the disk was Windows software, so maybe it's only Windows. The software seems to be very simple. It's just a single folder on the CD-ROM. It does not install into Windows. It seems to work with practically every version of Windows. You just drag the contents of the disk, that single folder, which is called LED Fan Editor. You drag that um, either onto your desktop or in my case I just put it on the the C drive and within that is a file called LED fan which uh, I've made a shortcut on my desktop and you get this programming screen for programming the fan. You get the usual USB recognition pop-ups, but it didn't say anything about installing software that I could see. I don't think it actually uses a regular driver. Anyway, you end up with this fan here, and um, I've got it plugged into my USB port, but I'm not going to run it yet. Well, yes I am. Take it easy. The uh, camera doesn't really show this very well. The quality of the images is much better than it looks on the video. I think there is some issues there with um, frame rate and so on on the camera, not synchronizing with the fan, but in reality it's very crisp um, lettering with virtually no jitter to it, and the colors are very vibrant. It's not a lot of air coming off, you wouldn't expect to for such a small fan, but uh, it is intended to be a personal fan after all. And using the button on the fan you can turn it on and off. The software itself is organized into the message display you can have a number of different messages and you can 
change the opening sequence, how the message appears. For example, it can appear opening from left to right, and then in the middle it can program be programmed to do various different things like rotate in a counterclockwise or as they say here anti-clockwise rotation, do some other things, and then there's a closing sequence which is spelled from right to left. It's a little bit of Chinglish there, um, but obviously there's different options. And then you can preview right on this little area of the screen. This is supposed to be the fan. Uh, the core of the fan and then I think the messages appear around here so you can see what it's going to look like and there's all sorts of uh, well it basically gives you a little on-screen keyboard uppercase lowercase numbers punctuation graphics and little emoticons and things like that that are all in the library of characters you can have uh, displayed on the fan and uh, then there's the upload which allows you to send it to the fan. Now here's the part that I find a little confusing. According to the manual and according to the packaging, it uses microwaves to transfer the, uh, the message to the fan. And uh, I'm pretty skeptical of that. I somehow doubt that it's actual microwaves. Um, but I don't know what it is. Uh, apparently it's some sort of wireless connectivity, but is it proprietary? Is it uh, some sort of Bluetooth? I don't know what it is, but it's funny they don't actually say Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, could it be microwaves? I'm not an expert in that. I don't know if it's possible or not. Anyway, it's sort of moot. So it looks like by default it has about four messages in here. I'm going to program it with my own messages. This is the area you have to fit the messages into and um, according to the instructions it's supposed to be able to program up to 20 messages and each message can be 20 characters including the spaces. Uh, and it won't let you type any more. It doesn't scroll or anything. Now as I count it, that's one character, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen characters. So I think the instructions lied. Uh, maybe they are related to some other version of this product, but this seems to be limited to eighteen characters. So um just putting in some different messages here. Oops. So I've put in uh, five different messages. Now I've selected the first message to enter scrolling from left to right and then to rotate the message clockwise and then to exit from right to left. And then the next message will come from the top downwards, flash three times and then continue downwards. The next message will go from right to left I'm going to change this. Yeah, so now this one will go from right to left anti-clockwise and then left to right exit. The fourth one will come from the bottom up, flash three times, and then uh, continue up. The fifth message will display all instantly, remain with no effects or rotations, and then all extinguish together. So I should be able to do a preview here. Scrolls to the right. The next it's from right to left. The next one comes from the top down. Flashes three times. 
and then goes back up. The next one appears from right to left, rotates anti-clockwise, and then exits from left to right. The next one goes from bottom up, flashes three times, and the next one just appears and then disappears. Then it repeats. Further editing can be done on each message. There's a little icon right next to each message and clicking on there, let's see where's my pointer, that opens up a, uh, let's see if I can, yeah, sort of an editing screen and you can actually go in and I think turn individual pixels on and off and paint your own messages and that one seems to work on four cells at a time so it's a little awkward but it looks like you can use that to customize the message a little bit um, also you can customize the colors so the way you select colors is um, you have to make sure you're in the uh, drawing tool not the erase tool and then you go down below each column. You can't change colors apparently vertically. You can change them in bands going horizontally. And you've got these color choices along the left. And uh, all I do is go up here and say, you know, I want this whole character to be red. So I hold down the mouse button and just paint the red line all the way across the character and then the character above turns to that color. If I wanted the next color <coughs> to be green, I put it in the green area, hold down the mouse button. Oops, I'm using a uh, pad on my uh, computer here with the wrong hand and it's really hard to uh, precisely change the color. but that's how it's done. So I've decided I want this whole message to be green so it's a pretty easy matter to swipe it all the way across. There are some inadequacies to this software. Um, <clears throat> for example, the new window that it opens to allow editing of a message does not have a minimize maximize button it just has a close button which apparently also serves to save the changes. Um, I had to drag the left and right borders of that window as far as they would go on my screen to be able to see the entire message and unless it's all that way um, I couldn't get to every last pixel of the message. So I'm not sure how that'll work on all different computers. Um, it's just barely satisfactory on mine. So now I've got it uh, displaying USB program fan, short for programmable. And uh, if I go up to the... Actually there's this tool here called Marquee Tool. I have no idea what that does. It's not described in the manual and nothing was uh, apparent to me about how that's supposed to work. So now if I do the pre uh, preview, you can see the whole message is green now. And I'm going to stop that and edit the other ones. Well, I should also point out that I'm using a Windows XP computer here. It's an old notebook I have, which is sort of a sacrificial computer if I'm working with, especially some of these Chinese products, uh, that I'm not always confident that... Um, the software is all that reliable. I don't want to run it on my good computers. So I'll run it on this one and it's not connected to the internet or anything. And you know, if something gets corrupted on here, it's not going any further. Um, and maybe the editability of these windows works better on something, a newer version of windows, but at least on here, uh, I find that if the messages are the full width allowed, I can't edit the whole thing. 
some of it will always be off of my screen and there seems to be no way to scroll over to it uh, so you may or may not run into similar things with this software on your computer uh, so you're kind of limited in that regard I've made a, a message with some of the graphics and I've changed the color of each one entirely and this one smiley face I've chosen each vertical column of the pixel bitmap to be a different color but because it's a full-length message and I can't scroll the message in this mode I can't edit anything outside of this group of characters and indeed the left hand column is um, just off the screen of the first smiley face and I can't actually select that one so again that's sort of a bug or a deficiency in the software there should actually be a couple of characters before that and you can see here where it does do a bit of an underline um, under the characters that you've changed the colors from the defaults and it depicts uh, the shape of the color bars from the editing screen so you can go in and save the message and I'm just saving it to the same folder as the uh, rest of the sequence so it's a saved message now hopefully so I'm going to try to upload the messages to the USB device now and there's a status bar there and the status bar completed and disappeared so I guess that means it worked so I'm going to turn the fan on now and see what I get where's that button USB program fan rotates right as programmed fades from right to left as programmed says hello Paul fades from the top flashes three times and fades from the top to the bottom really microwave fades from the right to the left should rotate counterclockwise and then fade from left to right I doubt it should come in from the bottom to the top flash three times fade up still cool it just maintains and should go away suddenly and then I've got these messages that uh, these graphics that I programmed in it's a little hard to see but you can see that this uh, one smiley face is all the different colors and then that fades out so that works and uh, just as a uh, bonus to this video there's another fan that looks identical uh, and it's just called the USB clock fan um, 
both of these fans, by the way, I didn't mention them before, are roughly $13 on Amazon. They may be sold by different sellers at slightly different prices. And there are definitely different versions. There's um, a version of the programmable fan that I just showed that um, is not RGB LEDs. It's just monochrome or fixed color. Um, so if you're buying these, make sure you buy the version that you actually want. Anyway, this um, other fan here, again, it looks just like the other one, except for some very minor variations in the embedded flex circuit board inside the fan blade. And I should mention that these blades are flexible. Let's see if I can get this in the camera. Ah, come on. So they're, you know, safe. If they hit you in the face or something, they're going to bend instead of cut the skin. Um... Anyway, it's got exactly the same housing, same length of cable, same plug, same look, same single button on it. And this does not benefit from a computer, it just needs a USB source. You can see this is a clock. Now, this is a frame rate on the computer. Uh, this is some frame rate aliasing from the uh, video camera here. In reality this display does not seem to strobe or spiral or anything like that. It's a very stable display. But, um, and, it, and the numbers are fairly crisp with a 12 and a 6 and a 9 and a 3. And you've got your hour hand and your seconds hand and your minute hand. And this is programmed just like you would a digital watch or something. You hold down the button and the display starts flashing one of the hands. And then you hold down the button until the hands move to the proper time and then to exit the setting mode, you just release the button and don't hold it for, I don't know what it is, 10 seconds or something, and then it returns to normal display mode. So this is another cool thing. Um, it's kind of too bad that they didn't incorporate both the clock and the programmable display into one unit, so it could you know, be programmed to uh, show your messages and then show the time for a little bit and go back to the messages or something like that. But it's it's two separate products as it is. What else can I say about these guys? It's probably hashing up the audio here and I can't even tell uh, on account of the wind blowing from the fan at the microphone. I'm hoping it's not doing that. Um, and uh, besides the fans being... You can see that the motor isn't very powerful and the fans are flexible so it's not going to hurt anything. Reasonably quiet. Um, when I got both these fans, you know, they're jammed into these bubble packs, which protect them pretty well, but it does bend the blades ever so slightly. And I found both of these had a lot of vibration when I took them out of the box, both the clock and the programmable fan. And they shook and you could hear the vibration. Um, now that I've had them out and running for a little while, they've calmed down. They're not as noisy, and the vibration, although still there, is pretty minor. And um, I'm guessing that's just because the blades got unkinked from shipping and have res resumed their normal shape a little better and, and their uh, optimal balance. Anyway, so I hope that this has been useful to anybody else who might want to check these novelty fans out.